Hey everybody, this is Joel Janikowski from Hedinger Public School here with you on Hawk Talk, talking today with uh, Superintendent uh, and Principal uh, Darren Siemens. And uh, we were going to talk with you today about uh, our December 7th school board meeting. And uh, I'm going to let Darren kind of introduce some, some of the things that they talked about. I have some questions and so on and so forth. And we're going to kind of continue from there. You bet. You bet. So this is our first time doing this after one of these meetings. Um, we'll try to get on DTO tomorrow as well. But, of course, you know, we have our typical things. We always start off a meeting with looking at uh, the agenda items and making any possible changes. And then um, we do do the pledge. Uh, that's something that's been added new uh, new this year. Um, and then we go through the financials. We look at last month's financials. We check, take a look at those, any manual checks, and then kind of just keep checking the budget and seeing where we're at as far as going through the budget and the expenses. You know, here we are, you know, halfway through the year. We want that budget to reflect that appropriately. You know, we don't want to be sitting here halfway through the year and all of a sudden, ooh, most of the budget's gone, right? Um, so every month we go through that. We check those numbers. And then, of course, we have some reports that are always on the on the menu. Um, I give a report for the superintendent and high school principal. Mr. Erickson does an elementary report. And then uh, Mr. Kohler does an athletic report and activities report. Um, and then at that point, um, quarterly, we have student council. Ms. Henderson comes in and does a student council report on what the student council is working on. And then we get into kind of committees, you know, all the different committees that board members are on, things of that nature. Um, sometimes the committees have met, sometimes they haven't. So, so it isn't like every committee meets every month. Um, it kind of just depends on what's coming up throughout the year. So, and then we go into any agenda items that need to have or just informational things and things that need to take action that the board needs to make a decision on. So that kind of just explains what we do. Um, and then today, I guess we'll just kind of talk about maybe some of those action items that, that they discussed last night. Okie doke. So, um, you know, just to kind of quick summarize based off of, you know, the miscellaneous business section, um, you know, as far as, uh, superintendent, elementary, even athletic, uh, report, was there any reports, any, any takeaways, you know, any, any, subject? so this meeting took place, um, sooner than our three week, our, 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 traditional time frame between meetings so not a lot has happened since that november meeting uh, traditionally these are on the third wednesday of the month we had to move this up because a lot of the board members were going to be traveling and doing different things uh, so there wasn't a lot to report on just to remind people though you know this is like we talked about the christmas concerts that are coming up uh, weather permitting next week it sounds like things are going to get kind of nasty um, but we're looking at our our 7 through 12 program is going to be on the 12th you know, we have we have the elementary program, I believe it's on the 14th, yep. that Wednesday. Yep. You know, so we talked about that a little bit. Otherwise, really nothing out of the ordinary coming up because we're winding down. We talked about semester tests, and we're winding down the, the, the year there. And, of course, Mr. Kohler, um, you know, a lot of it's an update as far as, you know, participation rates, how many kids are out. And then it's, hey, where are they all going? Where, are they, where have they been? What tournaments are coming up? Um, things of that nature. So, gotcha. Not a, not a lot. Nothing really riveting there to report. Gotcha. So, but, but as out we, of the ordinary. But as we continue doing these, you know, we'll be able to get yeah. more updates and more information on those as as we keep. You bet. Those. You bet. Um, you know, yeah. talking about the the snow, snowstorm and talking about semester tests. Even this morning, just sitting here, you know, they're talking about this thing coming up out of the south or whatever. I'm by no far no means a weatherman, but next week is where most of our semester tests land for the 7 through 12. So I, I'll just say it now, if something happens to where we have to miss a couple of days of school next week because we're looking at a blizzard, there's a, there, that would mean that those semester tests would would come back after the New Year's and we'd be looking at doing semester tests. So um, just to kind of put that out there now, I know a lot of people get worried about the weather and, and this, this storm is mm -hmm. coming during semester test window, so... Um, you know, we may have to get a little, a little creative with semester tests this year, or they, like I said, more, more, we'd be taking them when we get back. Gotcha. 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 So next on the list was building committee report. Um, what came out of that in the school board meeting from you last bet. night? So from last night, the building committee report talked a lot about, uh, the projects from the summer that were being finalized. Uh, the, the windows, um, that's all done and taken care of. We talked about the boilers. You know, we're still with the steam boilers on the elementary side. We're still working out some electrical bugaboos there. Um, so we talked about that a little bit. And then most of the conversation, honestly, was about the pool. 
Um, there were some new things in the kitchen. If you've been up up there recently, we have a lot of new equipment in the kitchen that we were able to fund through grants. So we did talk about that a little bit, but a lot of it's the pool, you know, and there were some major decisions made last night in regards to the pool mm-hmm. to keep that project on time. I mean, it's it's way overdue, but there's been a new timeline set up, and the school district is really trying to hold everybody ap- accountable to g- make that timeline. So hopefully we have water in this thing in May. Oh, wow. And at least we'll be looking at, at a minimum, having some, some summer programs in there. That's awesome. For, for the summer season, so. That's awesome. So basically just trying to get her done that way, you know, by the time yeah. it's, we when we need it, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully yeah. have it. That, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um. So that's building committee report. What about financial committee report? So financial committee right now, we're, we're in a situation with the SR money that we've gotten through COVID, or COVID money, if you want to call it that. Um, we're having some situations with timelines on that. So the federal government said that we had until 2024 to spend that money. However, there's a piece of legislation at the state level that says that the school district by the end of June, and this is traditionally how it is, it's been um, they've been pretty lax with it since COVID because of all the extra money that some schools have. Yep. But as far as our reserves, our reserves that we have at the end of the year cannot be more than 35% of our budget plus $50,000. Right now, because we've been able to get a lot of that money back, we would be over that threshold. So right now the finance committee is looking at ways to make sure that money stays here and that we don't have to forfeit any money back to the state or the federal government. Um, We have a lot of good creative ideas. But we're waiting on the legislative session. This is a legislative spring coming up, and there is some um, possible changes coming down the pike to where they may extend that that due date or that date of, of the June thing, or they may actually just get rid of it completely. And, and that would be nice because it would allow schools to actually start to save decent amounts of money to work on things instead of always being capped with this, this 35% plus 50000 So. So again, we're we're looking at different avenues there to make sure that the money stays here. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so then after that, there was the sports co-op committee. Yeah. So we just had a co-op committee meeting. That happens three times a year, and those those are meetings that have to happen. It isn't like we're having a co-op meeting because there's troubles or anything like that. Okay. We have th- three co-op committee meetings a year at a minimum, and what we do at those there's different things depending on what what time of the year it is. So this meeting that we had in December. We looked at the fall numbers, right? We looked at participation numbers. We looked at what we're thinking participation numbers will be next year. And as we build the schedules, we were figuring out based upon the uh, the agreement, the co-op agreement, we were figuring mm-hmm. out who would host what games, that kind of stuff. So it's just it was usual business of the co-op. We talked about some purchases possibly coming down the pipe here in a couple of years with some replacement of uniforms, helmets, different things for different sports. So it was it was just business as usual, and I know a lot of times people still see, oh, there's a co-op meeting. What's going on? And it's like, well, we're just mm-hmm. we're just meeting because we have to. Yeah, I it's mean, part of the schedule. Yeah, plan. It's totally, yeah. it's part of the schedule plan. It doesn't mean something's up. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm glad to say here we are, ten years into this co-op, you know, eleven years into it, and um, things are they're going awesome. You Absolutely. know, you talk about two schools working together to try to do the best we can to provide opportunities for these students, and I think I. I Everyone that's been a part of it over the years, whether it's coaches or board members or, or any of that, um, administrators and different staff, what a what a great relationship that these two schools have, and and um, they're a joy to work with, and I hope hopefully they enjoy working with us. It is a group that is totally trying to make the best decisions possible for our for our for our kids. So, um, and ultimately at the end of the day, that's what we want. Gotcha. So it's just business as usual for yep. the co-op, basically just looking at reports, looking yep. at data, making sure everything's all. You bet. We'll have well. another one. Yep, and we'll have another one of those meetings in the spring, okay. towards the end of the year, and and, um, and then we have one in the summer as well as we get closer to the start of the year. So okay, yeah, which you is bet. one of those three. Gotcha. Yep. Um, and then other committee reports. Were there any uh, additional committee reports? And, you know, last night off the top of my head, Joel, I don't I don't think there were any other committee reports last night because the committees they, there was no need for them to meet. 
gotcha. you know we are getting to that time frame where the curriculum committee meeting will 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 start to meet gotcha. um, and look at some maybe if we're going to try to make any changes for next year's class offerings, mm-hmm. things like that. Look at some of the partnerships we have with ITV and different things along along those lines too. So gotcha. there will be other committees coming up because it's that time of the year where those committees need to start making those decisions and stuff. So okay. Deal. So then other things that were talked about was unfinished business underneath there, which was the ENG tech update and then also the ESSER grants. What, what was the deal with those? So things? here's EngTech. EngTech is the architecture firm that we've worked with for the pool project, mm-hmm. the boiler project, and the windows. So um, because those, because all those projects are not complete yet, we still meet with them on a regular basis. And typically when we do that, it's the building committee that meets. So that's two board members that meet with um, EngTech and all the different contractors, and then they report back to the board what kind of decisions were made, if it's looking like we're on time, if we're having any issues, things of that nature. So, okay, um, you know, not it wasn't much to report there. We got besides the pool, you know, it, it's one of those things with the pool right now. We're running into it's way past its original deadline mm-hmm. or due date, whatever you want to call it, finished yep. completion date, and we're finding now that these contractors are have other work that they we're planning on doing because this pool was supposed to be finished. Um, you know, so we got to fight, we got to fight for them to get back here and get their work done in the pool. So just problem solving, problem really. solving. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Gotcha. Um, and then the ESSER grants. So ESSER grants, we were just talking a little bit more about our COVID money last night, our ESSER money, and just some of the other grants we re- we've received. We updated the board on, on some of the new equipment, like I said, that we purchased in the kitchen. And then um, some ideas that we had moving forward to try to get some some more of our ESSER money out as far as um, some of the purchases we'll talk about here in a little bit that that qualify under under the ESSER money spending awesome. uh, rules. Awesome. So underneath the uh, new business section, um, there was pool proposals, I'm guessing, by David Peril. That correct? is correct. David Peril was okay. in last night. Um, he gave us some information prior to the meeting. So David is our, our general contractor in the pool. Mm. So in the grand scheme of everything that's happened with the design on the pool from the first design to the design that was actually accepted because it made budget, a lot of different things were moved around. But ultimately, we're sitting here and looking at all the nice new stuff that's going on in the pool, and there wasn't really anything being done to address any kind of insulation issues, water barrier issues we have with the outside walls. Because they are literally just block, okay? Um, so there's there's no insulation value or any of that kind of stuff. So David came up with a couple different proposals that were above and beyond what was ever thought of originally on this on this pool design or the remodel of the pool. And ultimately, the board went with the option that provided the, the most coverage of those walls on the inside of the pool. So the south wall on the inside of the pool and the west wall on the inside of the pool will be finished where there's insulation and then it will have a um, an appropriate type of drywall that can handle the moisture w- because of the pool and then there, there will be some tile work done in there as well. So it's really going to finish it off well. It's going to look very, very nice and it's going to give us some of that insulation value that that pool has never had. That one will hopefully save us some money on, on the heating of that area and two, it'll eliminate some of the condensation problems and, and some of the problems that it may lead to down the road to with some of the metal things in there that um, could possibly lead to rust and things of that nature. So, so I mean, coming from originally, which was the plan of, you know, this being like a remodel, it like, you know, it's almost like a, a rebuild it, is the, the honestly, level that you're Joel, getting to. Honestly, Joel, totally, Joel. It really is. With with the way things have been done down there, it's, it's we got to remember this, this totally is a remodel. Um, so you're going to still see some imperfections of areas because we didn't tear everything down, but the board has really tried to make that as, as minimum as possible. So we're going to really have a beautiful pool on the inside. Awesome. Um, the outside, we're going to have some work to do because the budget wasn't there for some of the pad and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And there's a group that's looked at some different options on the outside and and the outside may have to wait a while and we may have to get creative with some of the stuff out there Um, but right now we really want to make sure that we get the inside of the pool as best as it can be so we don't have to come back two years later four years later and say okay now let's do it Um, they're being smart with the money and allocating it appropriately so that way that thing is done 
and they can be open and we can run those programs and don't have to come back later and say, okay, let's do what we what we were told we probably should have done three years ago. Okay. So. Gotcha. It's going to be nice. That's awesome. That's great. So um, another thing, too, I noticed on this sheet of paper, you have garage door written on here. Um, what What's the deal with that? You bet. You bet. So you got the benefit of having my, my agenda list from last night, so you see some of my notes on the side. So the garage door goes back to the pool. So on the south wall, we have all that beautiful glass that's already been put in there. And then we have this other opening where right now there's just these wood plywood doors sitting there. So in that space, um, David Perel brought forward – a plan that he had with Midwest Doors, and it was approved last night to do this, to put in an 8-foot wide by 12-foot high roll-up door that it will be made out of glass. So it's going to mm. look very similar to that other opening. Oh, wow. Um, but it will allow us the ability to roll that up um, and use in, and have access to that to the outside and have access to the inside besides okay. just a single walk-in door. So That's great. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Plus, it's going to provide a lot more natural light back into the pool. That's awesome. You know, anyone that's listening that, that, you know, up through probably 78, 79, and of course I'm just guessing here because I was born in 79, but originally that pool had huge doors. Really? That you could open up on the south side, and I think it had big, huge windows on the west side. So that thing, you could originally, it almost was like an indoor-outdoor pool. Because of how? Because of all of the light and the yeah. ability, you know what I mean? And the last couple of years of the old pool, before it had to totally get shut down. If you remember, all we had was that dinky little roll-up door, mm-hmm. and it was it was kind of a dungeon. Um, so the ability to bring back some of that original intent and that light into that area, it's it's pretty neat. That's great. Um, also, too, one of the things that was on the new business section was the cafeteria slash hill yard proposal. What what's that? All so about? here's the deal with the cafeteria. The tables in there um, have been repaired about as much as they can. They're starting to fail, and what I mean by fail is 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 you know, they bend in the middle so you can push them up and clean and move them around, and then you you bring them back down, and there's a mechanism that's supposed to hold them down so they don't spring up when a kid sits or an adult sits and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And right now on some of those, I'll be honest, we have we have some ratchet straps on some of them, making sure that it doesn't pop back up when people sit down. They're old. They need to be replaced. So we were able to get that approved through our SR funding because we looked at that size of the cafeteria and said, okay, what else could we use this for besides just serving breakfast, lunch, that kind of stuff? Uh, Years ago, there used to be study halls in there. It's a great space. With the use of these new tables, we thought, you know what? We could do some Zooms. We could do a class period, not hold a whole class in there all day Mm -hmm. long, of course. You can't do that. Yep. But the the times when we're not in there serving lunch and breakfast, maybe maybe someone wants to take a class in there and set up a Zoom with some astronaut from NASA or, you know, talk to a legislature or someone like that or just use that, that a panel, a flat panel. And you know those better than I, the, the things we get from Dactronics or Dactech yep, D- or Dactech, whatever. Dactech, yep, absolutely. So, like, one of the devices that we have right now in the AV room is going to be the same model. So yeah. in the AV room, we have this 86-inch smart panel, which is basically like a giant iPad for those who, of you who are un, unfamiliar with the with the medium or with the tech. It's basically like a giant iPad on a wall, basically. Yeah. is, And that's kind of the model we're looking at yep. putting in for the, for the, for for the cafeteria. cafeteria. Yeah. So, I mean, it'll give us the opportunity to use that as, a, as more of a multi-purpose room, really. And if we're doing things in the evenings like we do during our parent-teacher conferences when we have a, a kind of a community-wide meal in there, we'll be able to use that that flat panel for different information and oh yeah it, it, you know if, if someone wants to come up and use that room for something else it gives them the ability to do do it and show for different things too you know you mentioned the av room the av room for anyone that hasn't been up here for in a while that av room is is top notch as mm-hmm. far as i'm concerned with the technology that's in there and and things of that however because of 21st century education and all the different types of meetings that we have to have that room gets used a lot for meetings. Mm-hmm. So the, yeah. avail- the the availability of the technology isn't quite what we first envisioned it would be. Mm-hmm. So to have another room where we can say, okay, sorry, the AV room was checked out for this meeting, mm-hmm. but you can use the flat panel in the cafeteria. Absolutely. And actually, I mean, that's a good problem to have because yep. that means it's getting used. Yeah. You know. So, so, so we're going to have new, nice new cafeteria tables, which will hopefully get us through the next couple decades. And um, the ability to use that room for multi- multiple reasons. 
there's a multi-purpose room. The, the benefit of it too is there is still value, excuse me, in the tables that are in there, and those will soon be up on. Um, we'll either put them up on on Henninger Buy and Sell, um, or something of that nature, so people have an opportunity because they are still usable. Um, it's just you know. I don't want to be welding and hodgepodge and stuff when we got kids working on it, but for someone in their in their barn or in their garage, fine, go ahead, and you'll be able to use them fine. Awesome. So, also to underneath new business, <laughs> uh, CD rates. What what's going on with CD rates? Well, so here's the deal. We thought about it last night, and and obviously the school has different CDs and things of that nature. So we just discussed if if we wanted to try to move any money into a CD as the interest rates start to come up. Right now, because of some of the other things I talked about earlier with the the the, the dead di- the deadline, excuse me, of the June thirtieth, right, coming within oh, yeah. reserves yep. and all that, we thought, you know what, right now we don't want to put any money into a six month CD. However, we're going to continue to kick that idea around as the legislature makes some changes, and then we'll adjust and try to put that money where it'll make the district some additional money. So, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, last couple items on here. I see Cognia review. Yeah, what's, Cognia. What's, that, what's going on there? So Cognia is the accreditation tool that the state uses now. I believe there's 38 states in the United States that uses Cognia for accreditation, and we do that. So Henninger Public School is up for our accreditation review. Uh, we've had quite a few meetings with the group that will be doing that. In the past, it was a group of teachers from the state of North Dakota and other states. They'd come in and actually spend a couple of days on campus with us. Mm-hmm. All of it's done via distance now um, because Cogni is an online platform where we, we we download information and it's available for them to look at. And the idea is, is that that information is constantly reviewed, constantly reviewed. Gotcha. Um, so we have the Cogni review, and it's going to happen sometime between February and May. Okay, so it's um, coming. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. So they'll take a look at you know handbooks. They'll take a look at our mission vision statement. They'll look at our educational goals and plans, our spending plans, habits, all that kind of stuff, and say, okay, this might be an area you want to look at, or hey, this area you're doing great, and just give us a review and feedback on what we're doing that we can we can you know take a look at and say, okay, how do we want to address these items moving forward? Um, and that's a after this year it. Traditionally, it was every five years, but they're moving to an every six six year platform, mm-hmm. with like mid, like every two year mini reviews in the middle, okay. and and that's kind of about the best way they could explain it to me because even it's something new to, new to them to Cogni as well. Gotcha. So it's it's constantly evolving. It's an ever changing process, but ultimately it's a it's a good thing to be going through because it keeps us constantly looking at the big picture. Instead of putting out the little the little fires all the time, the day to day things that can be very consuming sometimes takes away from the. Hold on here, is it, are we are we are we working towards our goals, or, gotcha. did, or did we just got off or did we just get off track, gotcha. right? So to go through this, it, it's a great way to refocus and say, hold on, time out. We 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 said we were going to work on this, but we haven't really done anything with it for a while. Is it still important enough for us to do, or what, why 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 are we not doing that? Gotcha. That makes sense. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Well, great. Awesome. Last thing on this list here, I ha- I see that you have written down boiler. What's uh what is what is this extra rating here on the bottom there? Let me take a look at that here. Yeah, you bet. What do I got? What do I got here? Oh, so what we were looking at. So with all the use of the rooms in the in the building, you know, when I was here, we had one computer lab. We have three computer labs. We had one ITV room. We have two ITV rooms. Um. There's no storage in this building. So right now we have some of those ITV rooms where they're partitioned off and there's some storage in the back. So we are playing with the idea of using some space we have on campus to try to make make an additional storage building. Right now it's just it's really not fitting into the financial plan to, to, to really tackle right now. So we're still going to just keep kicking those ideas around. I just want to make sure that we have the ability to where if we need to separate classes or break class sizes down, that we have the the space, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and right now, the reality of it is, is if something like that happened, we, we'd really be looking at those computer labs or those ITV rooms saying, okay, do we need three? Do we mm-hmm. need two ITV rooms? Because that's kind of the only space we have left. Gotcha. So yep. um, 
So yeah, we're just we're just kind of having that. It's the start of that conversation, saying well, what do we do with the things we need to store? I mean, you've ran into that with your when you're trying to to do your stream team stuff and moving Absolutely. things around, and it's like you know we got we got stuff on the stage that was never meant to be on the stage, yep. but there's nowhere else to put it. Yep, and it's got to go somewhere. Yeah, it's got to go somewhere. Some of the stuff you can't you can't get it. Uh, one of those uh, shipping containers. You, can, mm-hmm. in, you can't put everything in a shipping container with when you have four seasons. Yes. Because now you're going to have mold on stuff that never was supposed to, you know what I mean? Yep. So it's like, okay, great, you can put a shipping container out back, but that's really not going to solve the problem that we have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so we're just kind of problem solving, trying to figure yeah. out what we can do with that. Yeah, Moving totally. Forward. Awesome. Here, I'll give this back to you. Okay. So you can look and see if maybe we missed something. All right, so it looks like we got about everything in here. The next regular school board meeting is going to be January 18th, 2023, at 6 p.m. in the AV room? Boardroom. Boardroom, in the boardroom. Yeah, board so right at a kitty corner from the uh, high school office, kind of. Yep, yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. Well, Darren, thank you very much for sitting in today and kind of giving us yeah, thanks, you know, uh, a summary of what's been happening uh, with uh, the December 7th board meeting. So uh, we will catch you guys next time at the next episode of Hawk Talk. You can listen to Hawk Talk anywhere that you get your podcasts, whether it be on YouTube or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you can find us, you can listen to our content. So thank you very much for listening and have a great day.